Education is the most dangerous thing that we have. It's what every particular people use to build their wealth. They know something. They have a goal, an idea, now they know what to do. But beyond that, it's family. Because when I studied white, the Jews, Mexicans, Asians, what do they have in common? They have a family order and a basis in which they go about doing things. But we, all we have is infighting. No, that ain't my family. Who brother think he is? Nigga think he the new Malcolm X or something. No, I don't want to be. I want to be 19 Keys. That's Zeke back there. Zeke remind me of Fred Hampton so much. If you not supporting Zeke, if you not putting a dollar towards the mission that he have to be out here in the lower bottoms, the black bottom here in Detroit, where he's stopping the scum of the planet Earth and protecting men, women, and children on a daily basis, feeding the people, you can't consider yourself to be a good person. You can't walk around here, stomach in, chest out, head up, talking about I'm aware of our condition, but not only are you not going to do nothing, you're not going to help those who are doing something. That don't make no goddamn sense. So I could not come to Detroit and not have my brother bless the stage. Not only that, I'm going to give $5,000 of my own money to his organization. And... My brother has a cash app for his organization, and I want you all to put some money up as well. Because I believe that, I believe that if we could fund the dangerous minds in society, we can get very far. See, the white man has the ability to get failure money. He get money, he fail, or I'm going to give you some money to try again. You got more experience now. When we talk about capital funds at a large scale and level, None of that money goes to black brilliance. So you may have an idea, but you can't get it funded, so therefore you can't execute it or express it into reality. It's not that so-and-so was smarter than you or they just beat you to the punch. You don't have the resources. So now when I see us with the lack of resources, I'm not about to go blame corporate funding. When I see black media can't grow so that we can control the narrative and the messaging around our movement, the remoralization, the recharacterization, bringing those principles and values back into the household. I'm not blaming Fox, NBC. I'm blaming the business owners. If you have a business, turn your light on. If you got a business, just if you got a business. Now, if you spent more than $1,000 on black-owned media, turn your light on. Turn your light on. If not, cut it off. Black media, I mean, you went to a podcast, you went to a show, you paid them to sponsor, to put an ad on. I shouldn't see so many lights, man. Y'all ain't spent no thousand dollars. Come on, don't, don't stop the cap. We can get dark in here. <laughs> Cut them lights off. Don't fake it. I know everybody in media. Y'all ain't spending with them. The most dangerous leaders had their own media. Frederick Douglass had his own media. Marcus Garvey had his own media. Malcolm X had his own media. Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had his own media. Noble Drew Ali had his own media. They was able to control the messaging that went to the people. So when we talk about propaganda that's being spread, the propaganda is first spread. They say it takes 14 to 25 years to start the demoralization of a society. Because Sun Tzu believed that the best way to win a war was not with a gun or violence. No, you got to win it non-violently. You have to win it in the minds and the heart of the people. You have to destroy them so they're no longer connected to something of a higher level. But they also have to be susceptible to the messaging in the first place. And the reason they said it took 14 to 25 years, because those are the generations that are being impressed and programmed during that time. So between those ages of one through seven, you don't think for yourself. You are unconscious. So anything in your environment is programming, shaping, and conditioning you. So by the time you go in and you become older, they got you already. So when we talk about the great customization and personalization of where we at in society, I get people to study where you was at, where the world was at when you was one to seven years old. 
You think that the way you eat, the way you think, the way you dress, the way you feel is based on you. You've been programmed by the times and the conditions that you grew up in. We at low level, we at high level.